everybody this is amazing fantasy football i am josh and over there is the pot to my kettle chris and that's a reference to something that we come happened earlier today <laughs> um how you doing tonight chris i'm doing amazing it's uh as it as, as it has been in the off season it's our saturday night um so we're recording um and we're talking shop in terms of the fantasy show and we're talking uh winds of change and Quarterback yep, we're talking about flatulence. Changes. How about you? How are you doing tonight, sir? I, I am doing okay. I'm getting a dog. Oh, right. Yes. Welcome she's to a the club, She's sir. a beautiful dog. She is. Um, she is. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I get her on Tuesday. So if you're listening I'm to this right when you. it releases, it's Tuesday. Otherwise, <laughs> it's in the past. <laughs> they don't usually release it on Tuesday. Oh, right. Well, yeah. Well, it yeah. will be Tuesday when I get the dog still. Like, if, oh, so if you listen to it understood. on understood. Sorry. Sunday, Sorry. it'll still be this Tuesday. <laughs> this coming Tuesday, Josh is a dog owner once again. Right? Yeah, because you've had dogs. Once like again that. for the very first time. <laughs> I just like saying things that don't make sense. It's an oxymoron, folks. I like correcting me in such a nice way. <laughs> Once again, for the first time ever. It's a oxymoron, and then I'm not sure that Chris is joking or if he just doesn't know what an oxymoron is. I do. I do know okay. an oxymoron. Kind of mixing terms. Got it. Okay, cool. What are we talking about today, Chris? We're talking about changes, lots of changes in the off season, uh, as it is that we are one week away from the Super Bowl. Um, super excited to watch Joey Bagels do his thing, you know. Joey um, Bagels. But uh, generally, uh, we're talking about fantasy implications of uh, me, myself, uh, coaching changes, and you were talking, or at least the ones that we've got in the bag, and you yourself are talking about quarterback changes or maybe a little bit more on the speculative side of what we are going to see with this both quarterback That's what carousel. you think i tricked oh. you well there you go uh well uh so a little bit of quarterback uh uh, uh bargain basement talk here in a dynasty approach maybe <laughs> but a little bit of quarterback changes and i'm talking coaching changes why don't you kick us off chris because your coaching changes will kind of lead into into my um bait and switch it's not really a bait and switch but it's you, you, i i, I kind of pivoted away from what i told you i was going to talk about a little bit do you want to just of. jump jump in or do you have a point at which you'd like me to get to and stop i'm gonna you're gonna talk about it and i'm gonna ask you questions okay um more or less oh, my Chris, what's your what's a, the first team you would like to talk about uh, the Chicago Bears. Uh, if you haven't heard the news, and did, uh, and, and Matt Nagy when you were, is out. When you, when you went to the zoo as a kid, did you ever see the Bears in the zoo? I'm just, I'm sorry. No. Go, no. go ahead. I'm a bad interviewer. But, uh, fun, fun fact, I, uh, for those of you folks who don't know, I am in the Illinois, Chicago area. I'm actually like an hour outside of it. And his address day. is B. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, Matt Nagy is out. Uh, Matt Eberfus. I thought there was an L after. Eberfus. Flus. Eberfus. See, I thought that. Okay, I think this. I think this article was riddled with spelling errors. Because it looks so, like it looks like flowers, but it's flus. I should pull up another tab to verify. Not that I don't believe you, sir. I'm just. I thought it was Eberflus. Also, can't, but you can't just say that. You can't just take no, for what I'm saying is right. Go he down, thinks he's constantly. Don't, don't go down the road, pot. Don't go down the road, pot. <laughs> I mean, Says, I mean, earlier you thought kettle. that you 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 had to you took minutes verifying that I was right, and then you gave up, and then you kind of called me fake news. Out. So Matt Eberflus, as I originally thought it was, agreeing with you, yeah, being of course the instinct. Colts' former defensive coordinator. Uh, so the Bears go defensive this time with their head coaching hire, unlike Matt Nagy coming from the Chiefs previously, the Andy Reid coaching tree, which is a West Coast coaching tree, so like the Niners, mm -hmm. I believe. Yep, yep, the Niners. Um, Way back to what's his face, the, the the 49ers head coach back in the day, Walsh. Thank you, Joe Walsh. Uh, coached uh, Matt Eberflus coached with Rob Ryan, not Rex. Rob Ryan in Cleveland as a linebackers coach, then went on to uh, really come into his own with the Cowboys. He coached the likes of Demarcus Ware and Anthony Spencer when they were a three-four rushing off the ends. Uh, uh, and was key when they switched over after they fired Rob Ryan. Uh, coach likes of Sean Lee, Anthony Hitchens, go Hawks. Uh, Rolando McLean, a little bit of a salvation story there for a year and a half or so. Hitchens. 
Then more recently, coaching Jalen Smith and Leighton Vander Esch to all pro seasons back in, I think, 2018 or 19, if he was still in Dallas, I think, at that point. Mm, uh, I don't want to spend too much more. I think so. I think he was with the Colts th- then. Well, he definitely got credit uh, for Jalen Smith, uh, and I think those two seasons coincided. Anyway, I don't want to spend too much more time on a defense fire. Did you know the way Eberflus- what is this? What does this mean for fantasy? Did you know like- that the way Eberflus got to the Colts? Do you remember that? We have to talk about it. He was hired by Josh McDaniels, whom we'll talk about I, later. Like I said, I don't uh, wanna, the only fantasy I'm implications. I'm going to mute myself right now. I'm just going to. The mute. only fantasy implications I see here, I guess, are a defensive minded uh, head coach is probably going to take a running approach uh, with Chicago. Well, the uh, Patriots coach, anyways. And cont- continue really kind of uh, a, a naggy trying to save his job there, giving the ball to uh, David Montgomery, who apparently is a little bit more talented than I think both me and you had thought. Um, but let's, we'll see. We'll see how it bears out. But yeah, really much. So who's, his off, who's his OC going to be? That's, 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 I guess that's my biggest question to you. Or is he not I named have, it yet? I don't think he's named it yet, or at least I don't have it pulled up here. Okay, because that's really let's that's go really back to the article we're, right we're here, with we're, spelling we're errors. Talk about some fantasy. <laughs> that we're, we're worried about the offense. Oh, the uh, 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 the quarter, uh, Green Bay quarterbacks coach Luke Getzey with an S Y Getzey Luke Getzey. So expect yeah, that's a right. West Coast and again. and and so Eberflus is kind of put into a bad position like Matt Nagy was in a sense that. Matt Nagy was taking over after Mitch Trubisky's rookie season and having to inherit Mitch Trubisky. That's a good way to put it, yeah. And yeah. and Eberflus is having to inherit Justin Fields. Now, I feel that Justin Fields has a lot more upside than what we saw out of Mitch Trubisky in his first year, but I don't know. Really? I think it's really going to hang hang on the, the offensive coordinator versus... But, I mean, the, the, the Bears wanted Eberflus, too, for his defensive line to... to help fix that bear. And I think bring the bears back to what they're really known for ever since the 1985 bears. Well, I mean, defense. if this guy, if this guy was the green Bay quarterback coach, he, he was under Hackett who goes on to, are we segueing? No. Yeah, anyway, it's... what I'm trying to talk about with Eberflus or, or should I say uh, slightly contrary to your point about fields is we had um, such a good segue. The fact, the fact that Matt Maggie, uh, Matt Nagy. Yep. Just did that. Nat Maggie. I just switched him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ooh, that's his name. Nat Maggie. Forever and hopefully he never comes back in the league and said so we don't have to refer to him by his new nickname, Nat Maggie. Anyway, Matt Nagy uh, was an offensive guy. Eberflus being a, being a defensive guy, I think makes the situation different in that way. But yeah, you you make a good reference in terms of a guy guy he didn't pick, right? In terms of a starting quarterback. But I think number one, Eberflus. T- takes his first head coaching job ever. Number two, if he didn't believe in fields, he probably wouldn't have left. Cause I feel like he probably got some other job offers in the last two or three years. Not necessarily better, probably be worse, but that's all I'm saying about your flus. Let's move on to something. I guess <sighs> generally the senior bowl is looked upon as having more of a lack of skill position and particularly at the quarterback position and very heavy at the interior offensive line and the, defensive line so look for help in the trenches if you're chicago picking to help out matt, uh matt field to help they out justin it. fields and matt eberflus <laughs> the defensive they minded coach uh again moving on alphabetically speaking to dallas not a lot of change to report here mccarthy dallas. keeps his job dan quinn stays and of course there's already drama about why is quinn taking it, you know, is Quinn supposed to take over if, if if McCarthy doesn't like win a certain amount of games? Kellen Moore has had multiple interviews, including Jacksonville and Man- Miami, just a day ago. More to come on Miami later. My feeling is, uh, again, I mean, McCarthy stays. That's a foregone conclusion. I mean, uh, he did win 12 games after all. But he ends up with both Quinn and Moore probably breathing down his neck this year, as I don't think probably Moore is going to end up somewhere. I do speculate on that a little bit earlier, I believe with uh, maybe Jacksonville and Miami. Uh, but yeah, I think it's McCarthy is, is a fine uh, stay as far as fantasy goes. I think about Dallas? Are we it's, it's, about it's Dallas? because there are coordinators both just got finished interviewing in terms of Dan Quinn, who is confirmed to stay and Kalen Moore, who is literally just interviewed today, coaching changes, head coaching jobs. Okay. There's still openings. Kellen Moore is supposed to f- is, could fill one of those openings. I don't think he will, which I go on to say. 
and then I'm I I'm cutting out part of that, but that was some good stuff right there. So keep going. <laughs> Great. I think I got to start over here, or at least nope. uh, I think I got to Dan keep Quinn. Um, Kellen Moore has had multiple interviews, including Jacksonville and Miami just a day ago. Uh, my feeling is, I mean, obviously McCarthy stays, uh, and I mean, he did well 12 games after all. Um, but he nope. ends up with both both Dan Quinn and Kellen Moore kind of breathing down his neck for 2022. Because mm-hmm. I don't think Kellen Moore ends up getting a head coaching job, although, again, he is interviewed. Uh, and I do kind of pontificate about that later on with, I think, Jacksonville and Miami a little can, bit. But can I, can I, I, think, I think he stays put. Go ahead. Yes, please. Um, you can't pontificate on Jacksonville because Doug Peterson is our new head coach. Um, my bad. My bad. My bad. But quick question. I thought um, that Dan Quinn was staying in Dallas. Like he came out and said, I'm, I want to stay in Dallas. Yes, Dan Quinn is staying. Okay. Like I said, I, th- I, I was think just he clarifying up, that, that I w- my memory was correct there. I think Dan and Quinn ends up breathing down McCarthy's. Where do you think that. The better or higher. Well, okay, th- th- you were going to talk about that later. What are the opening positions that are not, that are still, uh, what are the head coaching positions that are still available? I know you're going to talk about it here in a still second. Available but... are. Vikings? God. Nope. Oh right. Uh Dolphins. Saints. Yep. Yep. I think that's it, right? That's it, technically, because Seahawks okay, doesn't going. really count. Do you want me to just Unfortunately talk about those? not. Do, do you want me to just talk about those two teams? No, no, no. I was uh, that was a legit question. Sorry. Okay. Okay. I was confused. Uh so nope. the first answer was incorrect, as you pointed out with Vegas, no Minnesota, but yes, Saints are still looking, and Miami, and Miami. More to come on Miami. <laughs> Let's can we um, fast forward to Denver? That's who would be next alphabetically speaking. Yeah, when excellent. I said that twice in my notes, that it was in alphabetical order by teams who are relevant. In I'm terms gonna of go over changes. here and shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> so of course in Denver, uh, Vic Van- Vic Fangio with an F. That's Vic with a V and Fangio with an F. It should. Be, it sounds like Van. It sounds like it should be Fangio, right? Sorry, I'm interrupting. It does. Oh. No, you're. I'm, I'm on. I'm on the same. On the same boat there. Uh, and Nathaniel Hackett is in, of course. Nathaniel Hackett being the Green Bay offensive coordinator for the past couple of seasons. Um, quick mention here, Adam. Uh, for how the the coaching tree falls, Adam. Stenovich, the Packers offensive line coach, steps up for offensive coordinator position in Green Bay. So mm-hmm. probably expect more of the same worth there. Mentioning. That's worth mentioning there. Uh, Hackett uh, is an interesting hire, obviously, because Denver was one of the rumored spots for Aaron Rodgers to land. And Aaron Rodgers has raved about Hackett for the past couple seasons. Maybe not, not going to that speculation, but OK, let's keep going. Uh uh, Hackett is also credited for squeezing every bit of production possible out of the uh, corpse of Blake Bortles <laughs> to the tune of a playoff run, if you don't recall. Uh, I feel like several years ago. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, uh, whether it's Rodgers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, five? It feels like it's five. seven, but it's more like three or four, honestly. I think. Five. It's four or five. Anyways, okay. keep going. Whether it's Aaron Rodgers, as I speculated about, or a Jimmy Garoppolo, or, hey, quick reminder, folks, Deshaun Watson is probably going to play football for somebody. I don't know that to be true, but we'll see. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I believe, Why didn't I keep going? I'm going to write I believe, that in my notes. Uh, I believe Mr. Uh, John idiot. Elway, a uh, quick reminder, he is under scrutiny after the Brian Flores lawsuit. More to get to with that, not to bury the lead. Uh, but I believe Don Elway and the Broncos uh, go get a veteran quarterback. No doubt in my mind, honestly, like almost like 98%. Seriously, they've done it before multiple times to the likes of Jake Plummer back in the day, Kyle Orton, Peyton Manning, the shining example, and Case Keenum there for a year, uh, a couple years ago, come to mind as far as Denver kind of delving back into this uh, veteran uh, quarterback uh, racket with, which is still a very good defense. Uh, they let, uh, Somebody go, did they not, from the defensive backfield, a cornerback? Who's that? Denver? Am I going down the wrong path here? I think you're going down the wrong path. I mean, well, they let Von Miller go a year and a half ago, I feel like now. You mean about you mean about four months ago? Von you Miller? Think, yeah, they before traded the, him to the Rams in mid season. Right before the deadline. Oh, okay. So there you go. Um still that they, they perform very well statistically, defensively, both fantasy related and uh football related. Uh, so, you know, you get an offensive guy here. I think they're looking for a QB, and I think I think Aaron Rodgers is their guy. That in, in but, again, I, I'm speculating I about that. Go ahead. 
But I think with a defense of, of what they've got and uh, to be a little bit of bias here, they're running back Javante Williams. I think you can insert a Garoppolo level guy or a cousins level guy who we'll get to a little bit later with a little bit more speculation. Uh, maybe um, that, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it's, it's a plug and play, honestly. Uh, but I think he could win a lot of games in the NFL. And I think you can really uh, buoy a good fantasy offense. Uh, Cause I just think Teddy and obviously Mr. Drew Locke have, underperformed um and i don't know if sutton's back but uh yeah i love the right. running back they signed the him to a new contract there you go thank you yeah there you go that's all i have about denver on to the next unless you have something to say about the broncos uh, i have a lot more to say but well i'll wait for my turn i'm going on to the next team yeah, go for it, man. What is okay. the next team? Uh, Jackson, Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, yeah, okay. Horse, Urban Meyer. It kind of feels like old news, obviously, because uh, it happened with a week or two left in the regular season, if I recall. Uh, Urban Meyer's out. Doug Peterson. Uh, Peterson with a D. Uh, to Peterson. Refresh, folks. Peterson. <laughs> yeah, right. Or is uh, it? Is in Never mind. The Super Bowl winning coach from the uh, 2017 regular season of the Eagles. 2018 was when the Super Bowl was played, right? Struggled it was five years bit. ago. Jacksonville went to the AFC Championship because it was the same year the Eagles won the Super Bowl. Keep going. There you go. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I listed Trevor Lawrence as my dark horse to creep into the top twelve. Not not that Doug Peters, Peterson was hired. The fact that I expected, Peterson. I hoped for a offensive minded guy. Uh, I I think Peterson could call a great scheme for Lawrence, and we'll see lots of RPOs run pass option to remind folks at home uh, and it'll get Lawrence more comfortable than he was in 2021. Uh, as far as fantasy speaking, Peterson's offensive playmakers weren't Peterson. great uh, back in his, it's not really pronounced Peterson. <laughs> I know it's I'm going to keep doing not. it though. Just to remind folks at home, fake news. It is not pronounced <laughs> Peterson. It's Peterson, almost like Peterson, Peterson with a T it's Peterson with a D uh, fantasy speaking is off plays offensive playmakers weren't great. Uh, no relevant running back to speak of like the best one was like, Oh, I had it up earlier. No, I didn't type it. Uh, it was like Clemens or somebody. It was crazy. Um, nobody really stood out. Uh, and his best receiver was Ertz, uh, which it was, uh, of course, Zach Ertz's best season of his career. I think we continue to see a committee somewhat, but Miles Sanders has a, a, good, a good chance to separate himself and take on more of a 65% uh, percent type of role that we can probably bank on as an RB2 in fantasy. Uh, so I think that's just kind of in terms of rushing, you look at the Eagles and Peterson is, as a, uh, 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 rushing defensive kind of minded team where he kind of gets the most out of Jalen hurts. Cause I don't think he would have signed on the dotted line to be the coach if he didn't think he could get something out of him for at least a couple more seasons. Uh, I'm not saying they're saying that's connected at the hip, but yeah. Um, also an, uh, somebody who interviewed previously before the hire was Mike McDaniel, the Niners offensive coordinator, moving on to the Las Vegas Raiders. Of course, Chucky, uh, John Gruden uh, is out. Uh, oh, this this jackass. And uh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, what? Ver Versace? Did I say that out loud? I mispronounced it. I should know his name. He used to be the coordinator, uh, coordinator for the Cowboys. Uh, Nick, it's not Nick, is it Versace? I don't know what you're talking about. I was uh, really the interim coach I, is out also. Sorry, clearly, I was blinded by rage about when when you mentioned fine. the Raiders and Josh it, McDaniels. Right, who I was about to mention. Uh, so the interim doesn't stay, uh, and of course, uh, John Gruden is gone. They John, wanted uh, like Josh the, McDaniel's is in. Those players um, wanted uh, what's his face to actually become the head coach. Like, yeah, it was weird. Well, I think they performed well at the end of the season. I, I'm not. I can't say I'm surprised though. I mean, I McDaniels, think the team was ran better with that dude than instead of uh, what's his face. Uh, I think McDaniel's McConnell, has um, interviews annually, and he's been basically has an opening when he's ready to step away. I think he. Uh, Performed badly in Denver, eventually, and then kind of oh, he was started to ta started to take the Colts job two or three years ago, and then said, "Oh, my, my bad. I think I'll stay put." And I just, Good. I think if he's ready, I think I think if he's ready, he's ready. Colts, anyways. I think if he's ready, he's ready, and there must be something he sees with the Raiders. I think I think Carr has something to do with it. Uh, as as it, as it uh, so, comes out with in fantasy terms, um, I mean, what can we expect here? I think we can see a tight end heavy approach. I think we can think see so? a run, run heavy approach. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they have an outside receiver to speak of. That's going to really draw McDaniel's attention right now. Uh, obviously, you know, going back to the rugs uh, debacle there and, you know, hopefully he pays his penance and uh, whatever. There's some closure there. Um, you mean my burning in hell? Yeah, sure. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, and, you know, I mean, talk about, I don't want to say rebuilding in terms of, again, the quarterback cupboard's not bare. Let me be clear in terms of uh, uh, David, uh, David Carr, I did it. In terms of Derek Carr, drink. <laughs> um, so uh, I think you can only go up, really. I mean, what do you think about Josh Jacobs in terms of kind of overall talent as it relates to fantasy? I don't know. I think he's just right on that cusp of a yawn. A 13 or 14 RB, right? I mean, he's still an RB2. Yeah, yeah, but I wouldn't put him that high, though. Okay, I, I would probably lean towards a high-end RB2 with McDaniels calling the shots because he's going to call the plays. You know he is, especially year one. Uh, I think he has... Probably. I think he wants to have a... a, a I, th- I think he sees a chance to step in and, 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 and stock the cabinet, as it were. You know what I mean? Like, he, he gets to buy the groceries, um, for the most part, I think he wanted the opportunity to do that. And I think maybe in Indy, there were other folks that wanted to call the shots. Uh, who's y'all's GM now? Um, it's not Greg, is it? Ballard. Thank you. Chris yeah, Ballard. Ballard. Yeah. So, and I, I, hey, for, for, for good reason, I think Ballard absolutely knows what he's doing. McDaniel uh. also wants to, wants to buy some of the groceries is how I look at it. So fantasy wise, I think you can expect Jacobs to maybe, uh, graduate to a high end RB two. Um, and, and Hey car, keep an eye out for car, maybe being a bargain in fantasy drafts. Oh. Minnesota Vikings and Mike Zimmer, of course is out. Kevin O'Connell, uh, the Rams offensive coordinator is in as head coach. Uh, as it relates to fantasy, I mean, I think we can expect a, probably a boon. Uh, what I mean by boon is a little bit of a bump up. I mean, Dalvin cook was already in the upper echelon of top five RBs when healthy. Um, hopefully they can manage his carries and targets well enough to keep him in that, bell cow role for the majority of the season um as it relates to kirk cousins i mean i think it's probably a slight bump up to maybe even get him from that kind of edge 13 14 15 territory into the top 12 fantasy quarterbacks you mean like he has been the last i don't know how many seasons in minnesota i don't know last i checked he was 13 not quarterback 11 last year quarterback 11 the year 12 the year before last year 2020 or 2021. 2021 this past season he was quarterback 11 okay um before that he was 12 i believe so i will look it up okay. just to make sure no, it's fine i don't want to vet it right now that's fine um i'm I going to because you're going to keep talking edge guy uh and maybe an know. edge lord yeah yeah. yeah, no, not exactly. exactly <laughs> nothing like that. Uh, anyway, moving on for the minute of the like Vikings. Like a minute edge lord? Uh, again, mm-hmm. I mean, well, mm-hmm. okay, so now he's a top eight. Sure, whatever. Uh, oh, Miami look, Dolphins. Was... Uh, so this is where it gets a little dicey here, folks, if you haven't heard. Brian Flores, the ex-coach of the Miami Dolphins, uh, is claiming he was unjustly fired. Uh, not only is he claiming that, he's claiming Dude. he was... Dude, you know what? You know what happened? We completely what? skipped over the news, which I will cover in my segment. I keep going. Oh, okay. okay. There's big news. Uh, big, Flores, big NFL uh, news. I don't think there's anything bigger than what I'm about to say, but thank you for interrupting I think there again. is. No, I disagree. Uh, Brian Flores is suing the NFL for uh, basically, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, uh, you know, discrimination, racism, um, and tampering. Uh, he claims that, I forget the owner's name or the uh, GM's name, but he's was claimed that he was allegedly going to pay him six figures to lose for every loss a thousand dollars a hundred thousand dollars yeah this is the first coach in dolphins not in dolphins history this is the first coach since 03 to have two winning seasons back to back um apparently they won i'm sorry lost seven in a row then won seven in a row like i don't know he's done wonders for the defense and i think they've come a long way with tua and the offense uh i wouldn't have fired him but hey i'm not saying he was clear in a way going to the Super Bowl. Um, so that's the end of the talk about the lawsuit. I think clearly there's some discrepancies with the hiring process and the Rooney rule in the NFL, but this is a fantasy show. I'm going to continue on uh, as it relates to the Dolphins, who are still, uh, you know, not a lot of, I guess, rumors out there. They don't have a head coach as of now. Kellen Moore is a name I keep kind of hearing. Obviously, the new hire will have a to deal with and Kellamore is you know thanks for that looks like opie <laughs> i guess uh but seriously i hope things can change in nfl and be more inclusive uh more i think while not necessarily great for dolphin playoff runs could be great for tua in fantasy if he's the guy who ends up wow. running uh, and ends up there but 
I don't know if Moore is ready for a head coaching position. I think he stays in Dallas. Now, of course, uh, you know, recent bias would state that, you know, Kellen Moore and the likes of Dan Quinn, who of course is staying in Dallas and company didn't perform well late. Uh, Mike, McDan- Mike McDaniel, McDaniel, uh, the Niners offensive coordinator interviewed yesterday, which would be Friday. So, yeah, that's all I have uh, on the Dolphins right now. Just if we want to talk about fantasy, I hope they get an offensive guy to maybe help Tua because I, I have a reasonably high opinion of him. But other than that, we're speculating a ton. Go. On to the New Orleans Saints. Again, I didn't find a ton, uh, and we'll be speculating a lot here with the New Orleans Saints. How Obviously, about we Sean just say P- that there's, uh, for time's sake, that we just say that they have a coaching position open because Sean – Lewis, Peyton, Sean Payton. Sean, Sean Payton is out. Uh, the Saints' defensive coordinator Dennis Allen is. You know, Sean did, Connery did interview and did, is in the hunt. They also interviewed Brian Flores, the aforementioned uh, Doug Peterson, the aforementioned, Peterson. who of course has a job now. Aaron Glenn, uh, for those of you who recall, a cornerback from back in the day, played for the Aaron Jets. Carter. He's been with the Saints for a long time with the defense, and the Saints defense has been really good. Uh, they're also <clears throat> interviewing Eric Bieniemy today. I think it might have been on a Saturday. Yeah. Uh, I hope of they course, hire him. Uh, Eric, that's the fit I like. Uh, again, just to end real quick on a lot of speculation, I think a Bieniemy signing with the Saints would help a Camara and whoever might be throwing the ball for him. Uh, the New York Giants, Joe Judge is out. Uh, I believe they. Bill Belichick disciple, but also the guy who got hired. Our special Brian teams Dable, coach. Maybe Brian Dable is in. Uh, he's a Buffalo offensive coordinator. A little bit more to talk to here, uh, offensively speaking. Uh, hard you argue with the hiring of the Bill, Bill's offensive coordinator, but you know uh, Brian Flores is also was kind of in the hunt. He's a New York native, um, but th- they go with Dable. Uh, interesting fact there. Apparently Brian Flores received a go get him got a buddy text from bill belichick about getting the giants job and he was like oops wrong brian so weird stuff going on with the flores thing um so as it relates to fantasy let's yeah i'm not sure that i'm not sorry to interrupt but i'm not sure what the nfl hatred is for brian flores i really don't i don't get why he got fired from miami i don't get why he doesn't have a job yet i don't care that he's um um, airing out as the dirty laundry in in the media but a that that's the thing that needs to be addressed. But b like he did a good job in Miami. Like why doesn't this guy have a t- job by now? Like come on. Well, I think come he's on, telling folks. you why. I think he's telling you why. I think it's based on the color of his skin. Yeah, and I don't and I don't get it. That's yeah. I guess that's what I'm saying. Agreed. Um. So uh, you know, but I guess as f- in terms of you know Flores not getting the New York Giants job and Brian Dable getting the New York job, I think so, it's a boon for fantasy. Um. I think if either the to the end of the day, either he can salvage Saquon and Danny Dimes, or he can't. Um, you, so you think that they, the Giants, stick with Daniel Jones? They, you know, we'll get to quarterbacks here in a second. Hopefully, you're you're about done. I, I, sorry, I mean, I'm, I guess I don't think there's a veteran out there outside of gosh. I mean, I guess Russell Wilson. Clearly, I say veteran Deshaun Watson. I mean, I guess those two names come to mind. If Aaron Rodgers is 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 in the cards, you have to look at it, but I, I don't know. I don't think again, as a, as a, as a head coach with a young quarterback, I'm sorry, as a new head coach candidate with a young quarterback, you probably go into the interview process touting him. Are you giving lip service? I hope not. I don't know what the owners and the GM want to hear, but I, I would okay. like to think that they're going to try to get another year out of Daniel Jones. Yes. And that obviously I think they're Saquon gonna get- has the talent. Yeah, I mean, Daniel Jones has had times where he's looked good, and then he's had times where it's like, dude, why? Yeah, but um, coaching what, an offensive what, line. Sorry, I don't want to cut you short by here, but how many teams you got left? Two, uh, one of which is kind of a – actually, okay, no, let's one. keep – I'm sorry, one. Let's keep going. One. I was just about to get going. Okay, cool. Uh, on to the Seahawks, which is the last team I want to mention, which is – in complete limbo except not because there's no mention of them losing their head coach but i wonder and this is really all i the only reason i put him in here is that uh if they're looking at a quarterback change uh i wonder if the head coach falls follows suit and just retires for a year or two i don't think so but I mean, why would you give up a head coaching job in the NFL? I would tend to agree with you. Pays well, but you know, I don't know. 
Um, so that, that's really all I want to say about Seahawks is as it relates to. Kind oh, of that was your last team. Change. Is that you slash, want to say yeah. something about the Seahawks? Yeah, that was it. Oh well, that's not really a coaching change, but I, I get I get what you're I get what you're. Well, I out. think me and you have speculated about uh, just such towards the end of the regular season. I think if they were going to get rid of Pete Carroll and if he was going to retire or like like leave the Seahawks, he both of the either one of those things would have happened already. There, he's there. Generally speaking, as it relates to the Senior Bowl, you're usually right. They want to have their staff in place before they start looking at draftees, yeah. before they start looking at the Senior Bowl, which is generally considered the beginning of the looking at what who we're going to draft as part of yeah. the off season. But hey, stranger things have happened. I mean, I wouldn't rule out Dallas getting rid of Mike McCarthy and getting Sean Payton in a trade or something ridiculous like that. Probably right. not well, going to happen. They wouldn't need to trade for him. He's already he's already quote retired or left his position, so they don't need to trade for him. Uh, I think that No, I don't know about the legalese way. part of it, but yeah, yeah that's I what mean. I'm saying. You can't like say I'm retired and then like jump on board with another team free and clear like there's some contractual stuff going on there and compensation. Oh, I'm not saying it's happening. I'm just saying as it relates to the Seahawks and speculation about who we thought should have lost his job, Pete Carroll. Hey, if a quarterback, big name quarterback moves, it's 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 happened before. There's been coaches okay. traded before, before like Chucky and Sean, or not Sean Payton. He almost was traded for. Go for it. So a few uh, big names still out there would be, of course, uh, Byron Leftwich, the Tampa Bay offensive coordinator, former NFL quarterback. Uh, as I mentioned a couple times throughout not a very good one at that, the first but, part, yeah. uh, Kellen Moore, Dallas's offensive coordinator, continues to get looks. I don't um, think it's this year, but the only, I don't think he deserves it yet. But the only he name, shot himself like, in the foot this year. Yeah, Miami would be the only name I could uh, uh, pin to him as of now. Leslie Frazier, the Bills defensive coordinator. Mm. I mean, always worth a look in terms, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Coach is a heck of a team there. Uh, Eric Bieniemy annually to continue like to get the well. Rooney Rule snuff. Um, let's hope he maybe gets on with the Saints. Uh, speaking of the Saints, the uh, Dennis Allen, the Saints defensive coordinator, is still out there as a prominent name to be uh, hired for a head coaching position. What do you have for us, Josh? Oh, it's still rolling. Okay. So <laughs> that was our head coaching um, because we're not going to just look behind the scenes. We don't have time to do a show next week. So we're going to just kind of chop this one episode into two pieces and everything. Um, the news that I was alluding to, Chris, that was big, big news that we're going to do at the end of the show is that the Washington football team is now the Washington Commanders. Woo! And, um, yay. Like name change, Chris. I don't know if it's because I am getting older. I don't hate the name, and I'm and, I, and I'm a real crotchety person in in all. general. It's fine. I kind of like the Washington Football Team. I hate it. I, I, I think dude, it's stupid. I think it was stupid from the beginning. It started growing me, but then again, there's been other really, really bad things. There's been other really bad things that have grown on me, Josh. And I didn't go to a doctor, and here I am still alive. So all I'm saying is <laughs> that was a joke, folks. Um, it grew on me like because it was like, it was like there for face. a year and a half because yeah. it was there for like a year and a half or two two, two solid years seasons, two whole seasons two years yeah. so whatever they needed to change it um, commanders is fine I love the correlation with commander in chief they're based in DC done the only other one I would have probably put ahead of it was the one that went, had to do with the hogs and it was like the red hogs so they got to keep the red part of their name but I like the insert, red tails insert uh, why they're not a bird. But it's an it's an an, an an allusion to the Tuskegee Airmen, you know, the red Which tails, were like that American, movie. Not yeah, they American were the Afri American African American. Um, well, I mean, uh, World War II, World War II of like fi fighter squadron. There you go. Yeah, you know? yeah, I could say how that. I like that one. They get to keep the red, America. and and you know they, they you know I I thought it was a good name. Mm -hmm. Good I job, like Dwayne Commanders. Haskins. It was the only good contribution you've had to the NFL that didn't that didn't come around. Anyways, we've been amazing fantasy <laughs> football. Until next week, uh, you know, here's a shorter episode, and we'll have another short one for you next week. It will be about quarterback free agents, or something. <laughs> it's actually it's it's actually team it's actually NFL teams that are looking for new quarterbacks. Boom. There you go. All righty, man. Uh, until next week, everyone. Same bat time, same bat channel. Peace out.
<laughs> On that note, woo! <laughs> we both look great, by the way. Hopefully, Thanks, I tried a little extra today. <laughs>